Hello, in video two over the uh, urinary system for 2402 lecture. Here I'm going to be going into the nephrons themselves. So nephrons, they call them the functional units, which means that this is where urine production takes place. So the kidney's job is to produce urine. These are the guys that do it. And there's thousands and thousands of them per kidney. And uh, each of one of them basically operates the same way with slight differences between uh, whether you want to produce regular urine or concentrated urine, and I'll mention that. So here we are. Um, this nephron, this is a nephron. So nephron consists of this ball right here, this tubule, this big loop, this other tubule, and then the collecting duct. And if you look right here, this is the border between the cortex up here and the medulla down here. So you'll see that, the, that this structure right here, this ball, which is called a renal corpuscle, this ball is in the cortex, they always are. You'll have a little tubule here called the proximal convoluted tubule. It's proximal to the ball, proximal to the corpuscle, so that's why they call it that. You've got this nephron loop which goes down into the medulla, and this is the only part uh, besides the collecting duct that's going to enter the medulla, and this is where you get the concentration of the urine. And then you've got a distal convoluted tubule where some more processes take place, and then a collecting duct where even more processes take place. But uh, that'll all be hopefully clear here soon. Uh, let's talk about the corpuscle. So the corpuscle is visible under a microscope. You've seen them in lab. They uh, consist of two parts. They consist of a glomerulus, which is a ball of capillaries, and a capsule, a glomerular capsule. The glomerulus is this little ball inside, and the capsule is the thing around it. This is where filtration takes place, all right? This is where you make this stuff right here called filtrate. Now, filtrate is kind of unprocessed urine. You're going to make a bunch of that every day, and then, then you're going to try and take some back over the next couple of, uh, you know, steps. So, here we go. Uh, the glomerulus has the blood. The blood diffuses our force, I should say, out of the glomerulus into the capsule. It enters this little space called the capsular space. And there are cells on the inside of that capsule called podocytes, which means foot cell, which I'll show a little bit of later, that are responsible for allowing the liquid to seep through their uh, little foot processes. So there's little slits. So in any case, you dump a bunch of stuff into this capsule, and this is happening thousands and thousands of times per kidney all the time. Then you enter this renal tubule, and the tubule is everything else, right? And as I mentioned, proximal convoluted tubule, nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct. And I've got what takes place at each of these. So you've got uh, reabsorption and, sec and secretion, which are our other two processes in urine production. First, there's filtration, then there's reabsorption and secretion. And I'll talk about that in the next screencast. Right now, we're just still looking at the nephron. So those are the parts. Uh, let's look at the two different types. You've got the vast majority are called cortical nephrons. If you want to look at this little image over here, this cortical nephron, you can see here we're in the cortex. Cortical nephron has most of its you know, structures in the cortex. There's a little bit of a loop that dips down into the medulla, but not much. The other type of nephron are what are called juxtamedullary nephrons. Juxtamedullary. Now, these there's some big words in this chapter, I'm not going to lie. But if you juxtapose, if you've ever heard that word, if you juxtapose something, you're kind of comparing it. You put it next to the other thing. So juxtamedullary means you're next to the medulla. There's only about 15% of your nephrons are these, and they produce a concentrated urine. These guys produce your normal urine when you're hydrated. The juxtamedullary ones will produce very concentrated neuron when you're uh, when you're dehydrated. There are capillary beds, which you can clearly see here. There's sort of the glomerulus, which we've already discussed, and that's this ball that's in the center of the corpuscle. You have what are called peritubular capillaries. Now, they're all peritubular, uh, but you usually refer to these guys as peritubular capillaries around the uh, proximal and distal convoluted tubules not so much around this loop. With juxtamedullary nephrons, you can see that the peritubular capillaries are basically lacking, except that they are 
all found as this structure around that nephron loop. So when you find peritubular capillaries around a nephron loop, instead of calling them peritubular capillaries, I'm just going to refer to them as the vasa recta. And this vasa recta and this really long tube here, this long loop, are what are responsible for uh, producing that concentrated urine. Last slide, there is a structure called the juxtaglomerular complex. Now don't get juxtaglomerular mixed up with juxtamedullary. Sorry, Juxta, I didn't name these. Juxtamedullary are near the medulla. Juxtaglomerular complex, where do you suppose it's near? Juxtaglomerular, it's near the glomerulus. So what we see here, and I learned it as juxtaglomerular apparatus, so I may call it that occasionally, but the book uses complex. So whichever, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is where the ascending limb, so this, if we've got this loop, let's follow it. So here's, here's the uh, corpuscle, here's the proximal convoluted tubule, here's the descending limb and the loop, and the ascending limb. So this is the ascending limb of that uh, loop, which is right here. So this is that tube right there. This is that, this part is this part. And right here you see these arterioles that go in and leave the glomerulus. Well this juxtaglomerular complex has the function of detecting how concentrated urine is, or how concentrated the, the uh, blood going into the, uh, into the glomerulus is, and basically making a physiological, physiological decision, which I'll talk about later, uh, whereby you can constrict that afferent, afferent arterial to reduce blood flow into the, uh, into the glomerulus, or you can dilate it to increase blood flow. So just keep in mind, if this afferent arterial, which is going towards the glomerulus, if you dilate it, you're going to have a lot more blood in here, a lot more pressure, you're going to produce a lot more filtrate. If you constrict it, there's going to be a lot less blood, less pressure, less filtrate. So it's kind of a long, uh, a roundabout way of controlling how much urine you put out and in turn uh, controlling your blood pressure. That's it for video two.